To begin this journey, we'll need a mushroom. A starting culture that we'll eventually use to fruit our own mushrooms in an environmentally controlled growth chamber. This is Pleurotus ostreatus, the oyster mushroom. And this is Lentinula edodes, the shiitake mushroom. Foraging isn't the only way to get a starting culture. You can buy spores or agar cultures from the internet, or even whole mushrooms from the grocery store or farmer's market. The last mushroom I'm foraging is Herichium erinaceus, the lion's mane mushroom. And these can sometimes be a little tricky to get, especially if you found yourself at the top of a tree and hadn't planned how you're going to safely climb down with it. To reduce the risk of contaminating the mushroom cultures, I'll need to build a laminar flow hood with a HEPA filter to purify the air I'll be working in. The frame of the hood is built from extruded aluminum rails, and the walls are clear plastic panels taken from poster frames. And since my blower fan is smaller than the HEPA filter, I'll need to build an adapter plate to join the two. fan forces air down through the HEPA filter and into the hood, providing an environment of sterile air to work with the mushroom cultures. Now let's make a malt extract auger medium that will be used to isolate the mushroom cultures. Both the medium and glass petri dishes need to be sterilized by pressure cooking for 30 minutes at 15 psi. After pressure cooking, we can pour the plates in the flow hood and allow them to cool and solidify. We can now rip open the mushroom to expose the inner sterile tissue. This is where we can use a sterile scalpel to subculture small samples to inoculate the auger growth media. Our goal is to isolate and grow only the mushroom fungus. 
Since contaminating microorganisms are ubiquitous, using these aseptic techniques improve our likelihood of growing the mushroom fungus free from contamination. Paraffin film is used to seal the plates and protect them from contaminants after they're removed from the hood. After allowing the plates to grow for a week, we can select the ones that have had no visible contamination and grew a nice confluent fungal lawn. We can then transfer a small fungal excision to fresh auger and allow it to grow for another week to ensure we indeed have a pure, uncontaminated culture. While our cultures are growing, we can build the control system. The heart of the control system is a Raspberry Pi Zero, which will record measurements from temperature, humidity, and carbon dioxide sensors, as well as use a Wi-Fi power strip and a PWM signal to control a humidifier and the speed of an exhaust fan, allowing us to regulate the humidity and carbon dioxide in the growth chamber. I'm also including a camera and light for time-lapse photography. Oh, I
environmental control software that will run on the Pi is my own creation called Mycoto. I won't be showing how to configure it here, but check out the detailed article accompanying this video if you'd like to learn how. Next we'll create spawn substrate to grow up some mushroom biomass. I'm using bird seed here, which will need to be hydrated and then sterilized in a pressure cooker. A small excision of the mycelial lawn is used to inoculate our spawn substrate, then it's allowed to incubate for a few days. Shaking the spawn is done every day to disperse the culture throughout the medium in order to speed up colonization as well as prevent the substrate from growing into a solid block. We can now prepare our bulk substrate that will be used to fruit our mushrooms. Here I'm using peanut shells, straw, and cardboard. We'll need to hydrate, sterilize, and inoculate this substrate just like the spawn, except we can now use the spawn to provide a much larger inoculum, which will significantly speed up the colonization time. Thank <laughs> you. 
Once the bags are fully colonized, we can cut small slits in the plastic for the mushroom mycelia to fruit from. 